Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you about a controversial topic in the art world. Is tracing cheating? While I have a chat to you guys, the piece in the background is of a lovely dog called Banjo, which I did as a commission a while ago using pastels. I am Kirsty Rebecca and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. Now this is an interesting topic and everyone has their own opinions, but I wanted to share my thoughts on this. So is tracing cheating? Is it something to feel guilty about? Some people seem to frown upon tracing as a way of getting an accurate initial outline on your canvas. And a lot of artists lie about tracing their line work because they feel as though it makes them look less talented than they are or that they shouldn't get as much praise for their work because they didn't freehand the original outline. I understand why people would lie about tracing because some people believe that all the hard work is done for you and that you aren't really showing your artistic skill if you traced. And I've been there, I've thought all of these things, but I wanted to have a chat with you because it's not something to be ashamed of and I'll tell you why. Most successful fine artists that I know today who work in realism, especially wildlife or portraits, trace their reference photos in one way or another. Even the old masters use camera obscuras and they probably would have traced if they had the tools to do so. There are different forms of tracing, ranging directly from tracing over the photo using transfer paper or a light box or a projector, but they're all tracing. And the reason artists use tracing as a tool is because it saves many hours of fixing initial sketches. If you're trying to make art a career, you don't necessarily want to be wasting that time proving to the internet that you can draw freehand. You want to be able to produce as much work as possible in the most efficient way as possible, so you can make the money to pay your bills as an artist. If you're doing pet portrait commissions, the proportions need to be exactly like the original photo, otherwise it won't look like their pet. So instead of spending hours erasing, fixing, measuring, redoing lines to freehand, you can use tracing as a tool to get your line work down in a few minutes. There's no point using your pride to freehand the sketch if it's going to look not as accurate or if it's going to take you 10 hours longer to do that. The people who buy pet portraits want a beautiful piece of artwork that looks like their pet. They don't care how you got to the end result, they just care about the fact that they gave you a lot of money to create beautiful artwork that looks like their pet. The thing is, if I gave a reference photo to an artist that has 20 years experience and gave the same photo to a complete beginner who is only just learning how to draw and told them both to trace the photo and create realistic artwork, the experienced artist will look 10 times better hands down. And that's because you still need to have the ability to draw or paint and to render your artwork realistically, whether you started out with an outline that you traced or not. Just because an artist traces the original line work doesn't mean they aren't capable of doing the same thing freehand. In fact, if I did the same artwork twice, one using freehand line work and the other traced line work, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference in the end result. But I would know that it took me five hours longer to produce the freehand line work and I would have to charge a higher price for that time accordingly. Tracing doesn't do all the work for you. If you're drawing a face, for example, you can have a rough outline where the features go by tracing your reference. But if you don't have freehand drawing skills, you're not going to be able to put the shading in the right spot. The shifts in colours and values is something that you can't really trace. It requires skill, practice and knowledge to get these things right. For example, the cheekbones don't have any lines that you can trace from but you need to accurately render the colour shifts and the value changes to make it look realistic and accurate to the photo and to create a 3D looking painting. So even if you traced the face, you still need that skill to make it look realistic. There are a few times where I wouldn't recommend tracing though. If you aren't selling your art or posting it online and you're just practicing, then you can do whatever you like. But if you are planning on selling your work, I wouldn't trace other artists' painting or drawings. When you trace a reference photo that you use for your artwork, you can take these photos yourself, but you can also get them from royalty-free websites like Pixabay, Unsplash or Pexels, or you can pay a small fee from wildlifereferencephotos.com or other paid sites like that. And all of these sites are full of thousands of royalty-free photos, which means that you can legally use them in any way that you like for your artwork. The photographers who provide those photos to the websites have given permission for artists to legally use their photos. And the reason it isn't okay to trace other people's artwork is because they haven't given you permission to use their artwork. Even if they copied a reference photo originally, you still can't trace their artwork. When an artist creates a piece, they inject their own style and personality into it and it's automatically copyrighted to that artist, providing they used a royalty-free photo to start with. If you really like the artist's work though, 
You can ask them what reference photo they used, or you can go and find a similar reference photo from a royalty free site and copy that photo. You have the right to copy the same photo as another artist, you just can't copy their artwork directly. This is especially true for cartoon characters, anime characters, movie characters, and a lot of illustrations. These characters and illustrations were created by artists from their own research and they put their own style and creativity into it. The artist or company who paid the artist to create the character own the rights to that character. I would suggest getting permission from the company or artist before copying their characters to sell in your own artwork. And there are actually a lot of artists who make a living drawing Disney characters, but you can get into legal trouble if you don't have permission from Disney to do that. There aren't really any rules to creating your artwork, and if you never want to learn to freehand, that's fine, you don't have to. If you just want to get into the creative process of adding colour or shadows or rendering, then that's totally fine. But if you actually do want to improve your freehand skills, I would recommend sketching as often as possible, daily if you can, freehand from life or photos to make sure that you're still improving your freehand skills. When you're doing commissions or trying to meet deadlines, that's probably not the time to be practicing your freehand skills. But you can always do small sketches as often as you can that don't take up as much time on artwork that's not as important. And you can actually use tracing as a tool to learn to freehand. For example, I can give two beginners the same photo of an apple, tell one of them to trace it 10 times and then freehand the 11th time, and the second person to freehand it all of the 10 times. The one who traced the first 10 will have a better 11th freehand drawing than the second one who freehanded all of them from the start. They'll probably make the same mistake over and over again without realising what that mistake is. Your brain will play tricks on you because you'll think that you know what an apple looks like, but in reality, if you aren't paying attention to the shapes, the distances between the shapes and the proportions, then it won't look realistic. When you trace a photo, you're forced to realise that some shapes aren't as big as you thought they were, or the distance is different than what you assumed. Tracing is a great tool to improve your freehand skills down the track because it helps you see those shapes and lines rather than making the same mistakes over and over again. So basically, it's up to you whether you want to trace as a tool to get your reference photo outline on your paper or canvas, and it definitely doesn't mean that you cheated or that you can't draw. I trace a lot of my pieces, sometimes I choose to freehand if I have time, but I also sketch as often as I can in a sketchbook that no one sees, so I can practice my freehand skills on work that doesn't have a deadline and that I don't feel pressure to get right. I rarely mention how I get my line work onto my canvas or my paper, and you don't need to tell the world that you trace or you don't trace, it really doesn't matter and it's not important to your success as an artist. Tracing doesn't mean that you'll end up with a masterpiece, your artistic skill is what determines that. I've got a playlist on the screen that I thought you might enjoy, so click on that and I'll see you over there.